Are you learning Duport Etude number 13 for all state, all region, or just to improve your skills? Then this is the video for you. Hi, my name is Liz from cellomoji.com and I give you tips and tools so that you can learn all of your songs on the cello. Today I'll be going over Duport Etude number 13 and there are definitely some tricky bits in here, so let's start diving into the tips. If you are doing this for all state or all region, make sure you have the correct edition of the etude. Now, I know that there are several different editions out there for the Duport etude, uh, so I would definitely double check on the website, which I've included the link below in the description box. Um, make sure that you have the correct edition of the Duport etude, um, and that way you can make sure that you have all of the correct editing things that are in there. Um, if you are just learning this just to up your skills, I think uh, whichever edition of the Duport Etude you get, uh, it will be great. But if you are definitely doing this for the All State All Region Etude, since they are so specific about which edition they'd like, make sure that you have the correct one. All State and All Region are also pretty specific about the tempo markings, and this year is no exception. So this year, the tempo marking is half note equals 72 to 82, which is pretty speedy in here. So even if you're in the beginning stages of learning this etude, I really encourage you to have a metronome on, so that way you can actually keep track of what pace you're at and how far you have to go in order to reach that range that they're requiring. Don't quote me on this, it's not a hard fast rule, but I have heard from other teachers that in general the fingering can be a little bit lenient uh, in terms of which fingering you pick to do in the Duport Etude, but when it comes to the bowing, you really, really have to be precise about the bowing. So take some time to make sure you are marking in uh, different bowings if they throw you off off and like what bow you need to be on in a certain part of the page because this etude is really long and they don't really indicate uh, a lot of bowing markings in here so say you had to stop and restart it would be really important that you are always practicing the correct bowing so I'm just putting out some advice here put in some you know down bows and up bows somewhere within the etude so if you happen to lose your place you can easily find which bowing you are on another thing about the bowing here is they put the bow changes in kind of unusual places on the notes and I think that's what makes this etude a little bit tricky so my suggestion is in the beginning either a just disregard the bowing and make sure your left hand is like super secure before you add the bowing or if you are going to start with the bowing from the very beginning, make sure you're being super precise about where you're changing your bow because if you are practicing just like where it feels convenient and like whatever, then when you are trying to learn this for its final state, it's going to be really hard to change it into what is actually printed in the part. You're definitely going to want to know your G major and E minor four octave scales and arpeggios. Especially in this etude, there are a lot of arpeggios that can be found in here. So practicing at least the G major E minor arpeggios is really gonna start getting it in your ear and encourage your hand to be more fluid while it's shifting through all of these notes. Practicing broken thirds is also going to really help you learn the intonation of this etude as well. For the sake of yourself and your teacher, go ahead and put in measure numbers in this etude so that way when things are being referenced or you need to communicate uh, which specific measure you're at rather than counting lines and measures just put in the measure numbers and you're going to find that uh, Referencing to these measures is going to be a lot easier and faster This is also going to be really helpful especially if you're doing all state all region because they often put in uh, when there are errors marked in the etude. And in this case, in the Duport etude, they list this on the website, but in measure 104, that final note of the measure is an F sharp. So, I mean, unless you really want to count 104 measures every single time, it would be really good for you to just put in the measure numbers and find it right away. Pay attention to the places in the etude where it says same POS or same position. So this is going to help you really find these notes and give you a clue of what fingering to use because it's just indicating that your hand should stay in the same position while playing that range of notes. At the same time, I would disregard anything that says position one, position two, or three because 
is hopefully if you are playing an etude of this level, you don't need someone to tell you what position your hand is in. You just are able to find these notes and play them in tune. Before we go on with more tips, if you are finding this video helpful, be sure to give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you won't miss out on any other cello emoji videos. Rhythm practice here is going to be super helpful for two reasons. Reason number one is to help you play these eighth notes consistently and evenly. And reason number two, it's going to help you find these notes really quickly because this tempo marking that they are asking you to play this etude at is pretty quick. So you kind of don't have a luxury of just trying to search for these notes. And in fact, that's not going to be good because you need to be super accurate while playing this etude. So doing rhythm practice is going to force your hand to move quickly and accurately. This etude also has a lot of things of what I call sequences. So what that means is your hand is going to do a pattern and then what it's going to do is going to shift to a new location and do the same pattern it's just going to be a different set of notes this is going to be super helpful for you to identify on both page one and page two so speaking of sequences I'll show you what I mean in one section of this etude I'm in measure 32 or in this case it's the seventh line second measure and we're going to start this sequence from the third quarter note beat of the measure here we're alternating playing notes on the d string and then switching over to the a string and then we shift and again Again, play some on the D string and then shift on the A string. Okay, so here I am. I'm going to start on the third beat of the measure and it's on an E and then a C, which I'm on the D string. And then I have to shift up to the F sharp. Shifting up again. Shift up again. Shift up again. Shift up again. And that's the end of the sequence. So you can see the pattern is two thumb on the D string and then I form an octave with my ring finger and then I put a one down to play the fourth note of that grouping and then I move up and do the same fingering again. Consistency of the bow stroke is going to be super important in this etude. It even says at the beginning of the etude to play things very short. This also says to play the etude at the point and to be totally honest, I don't know if playing at the point of the bow is going to be the best place for this etude. I think you want to really concentrate on how can I keep these notes consistently short and also to make sure that you are making a big difference between where there are slurs and where there are not slurs and making sure that the bow feels very balanced in your hand when you are alternating between these different bow strokes. This also means that playing this etude at the frog is not going to be the best place either because then the notes might sound a little bit too heavy and a little bit too crunchy. So always go for the best sound that you can create out of your cello and that is going to help you determine where in your bow you should be. If you are wanting some more in-depth tutorials on how to play this etude where I walk you through step by step note by note in this etude, then be sure to check out the link in the description box below. And there you're going to find a link to my mini course on Duport 13. And this is going to be a great course for those of you who really just want someone to be right there with you playing every single note so you can really hear every single note. I'm going to break down this etude into smaller chunks and play through this etude slowly so that you can really hear all of the notes and you can play along with the videos that you're going to see. Plus there's going to be a lot of great bonuses and downloads, mp3 tracks, uh, practice sheets that are going to really help you master this etude. So if you are really wanting to really master Duport 13 and you just want someone to be there walking you through step by step in really easy and manageable chunks, be sure to click on that link in the description box. Let me know in the comments below if there are some questions that I haven't answered in this video and be sure to check out the videos on your screen right now if you are looking for more cello tutorials. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!